Hi, George. How are you doing today? Yeah, really good, thanks. How are you yourself? I'm great. We're privileged today to have George Bach of Northern Minerals following up a conversation that we had in May. One of the key ways to judge management is does it keep its promises? Does it stay on timeline? Last May, this is what George had to tell us. What's your timeline to be in production? Okay, so mining starts uh, the first week of June. So we've just um, been doing top, topsoil removal uh, at the two pits um, and doing our other preparation work. Fabrication has started of the project of the plant in China and we hope to start seeing that arrive on the shores of Australia in about October, November. Um, we then put it together and uh, we expect to commission it in the second quarter of next year and July uh, we start producing, July 2018. So George, you made some promises last May. We followed you. How are you doing on those promises? Yeah, everything's on schedule, Peter. Uh, we commenced mining in, in June, as we said. Uh, so mining's well underway, expected to be completed by the end of November. Uh, we're, fabrication uh, is on track in China, so I've actually got a bunch of my engineers and my chief operating officer up there as we speak, doing some inspections in the factories, um, with a, a first shipment due in October uh, to hit our shores uh, to commence the fabrication on site. Right, and remind us, what's the deposit? Okay, so it's a it's a heavy rare earth project with a dysprosium dominance. Uh, it's called Browns Range, um, and our premier of Western Australia actually opened our mine on the twenty seventh of July. And I've I've had to realise while being in New York this week, I've actually got to say the governor of Western Australia because it's a term that many people in North America don't appreciate. Well, good for you. Uh, it is important the management keep its promises. It's amazing you've been able to stick to the timeline that you told us you'd have. Now, last May when we talked, the company had a market cap of around $85 million. Where are you today? Yeah, so market capitalization today of around $105 million. So uh, we've seen a slight increase since May last year. Um, but uh, what's important is, is like you, you, you addressed before, we've got to focus on delivering on our promise, um, and we keep doing that. That'll um, build on the credibility. But we're starting to see fundamental shifts in the rare earth market, which will undermine and underpin the price going forward of our company. Right, now I've heard that it's due to China uh, enforcing the illegal mining within its borders, causing the supply and demand metric to return to roughly equilibrium. There's a number of factors in place. So if we just focus on the supply side for a second, exactly. Um, when I was uh, in China uh, in the last few visits, including just before catching up with you, your good self in May, um, the Chinese are really clamping down on the illegal mining activity. Now that's both from um, putting more restrictions on the top five who have got mining concessions and making sure they're producing within their production um, uh, licenses, and secondly, stopping the artisanal style mining uh, of illegal. So that's the supply side. Right. On the demand side, um, people are starting to get their heads around about this whole electric vehicle uh, evolution, and you're just seeing country after country um, coming up with new targets of eliminating. Uh, the the old style vehicle to an electric vehicle, and in yesterday's US Today, um, it was on the front page of the mining uh, se the money section of uh, that paper. Right. All right. of the electric vehicle. But that matters to you because every electric vehicle needs about one kilogram of your product, right? Uh, every electric vehicle requires about a hundred grams of dysprosium, so it oh. requires probably around two and a half kilos of rare earths, but about 100 grams of dysprosium, if you like. So you start doing the maths on that. And again, electric vehicles is a critical component, but only one of them. There was a, an article from the World Bank that's come out, a really good study that starts talking about where are the potential um, production profiles or supply profiles of the critical metals into the electric vehicles uh, and other um, technologies to improve our, uh, our carbon emissions and the like. Um, we're nowhere near that. The amount of um, rare earths, for example, we have to deliver in um, this huge upside of potential. And if I remember correctly, out of your pilot project, uh, the offtake is spoken for, but only out of the pilot project. The offtake for the main body of the project is still open for the free market. Spot on. So um, we've secured the offtake for, for the pilot plant, which is, which is really critical um, from a cash flow point of view and, and securing the project. Um, but we've got uh, the full-scale operation available. Um, so, you know, uh, that, that's exciting. I've already had plenty of calls. Probably the last couple of months, I've never had so many calls from, from potential off-takers about the progress of our project. Fantastic. So can we check in with you again in a few months and continue to check up on management's delivery on its promises? 
Absolutely. Look, we're, we're putting out um, a fortnightly flyer with a lot of photos because photos speak um, uh, more than words, if you like, and that's showing people the progress we're making. We're putting out videos, again, with today's technology and drones require rare earths. Um, it's a cheap way to show people that um, we're actually progressing because, you know, people want to see that delivery. George, thank you so much. Always great to talk to you. Yeah, no problems at all. Have a great day.